Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU verse here. Which one is this, Dan? We're introducing a new hero with Ant Man. Hmm. Everybody's favorite. But it has a pitch meeting. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Let's go find out, fam. Cheers, Steve. Fam, enjoy. So, you're here to talk about Ant Man. Yes, sir, I am. Cool. So, uh, do you need your parking validated or something? What? Make sure you pull on the door on your way out because it looks like a push, but it's actually a pull. Don't, don't, don't you want me to pitch to you? Oh, you're, you're not leaving? I wasn't planning on it. Wow. Well, awesome. We had a lot of people leave the project, so I just kind of assumed. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. No. You know, please don't leave me, you're my last hope. Sounds good. <laughs> please. Okay. So what's the story about? Well, you know how in the first Iron Man movie, there's a character that develops a super suit, and then he's like, oh, this is too powerful to get out. But then a corporate bad guy from the same company wants to sell it, and then makes his own evil version of the suit. And so you end up with a big final fight of nice guy super suit versus evil guy super suit. Yeah. yeah. So what I'd like to do is... That. Well, if it ain't broke, <laughs> oh, no. you know, keep doing it till it stops making money. That's what I figured. So tell me about the characters. Well, first of all, there's Hank Pym. He's the one that invented the shrinking technology, and he used to be Ant-Man. How is that technology going to work? Inconsistently. Oh, yeah, we're going to say that it reduces the space between atoms so objects keep their mass, but then we're going to do a bunch of stuff that contradicts that. How so? Well, sometimes Ant-Man's going to have the mass and force of a full-grown man, but other times he'll be light enough to run on a gun barrel or ride an ant. And Hank Pym is going to mm, have an actual tank as a keychain, mm -hmm. which should weigh about 60 tons. Why so inconsistent? Well, I wanted to do certain things because they would look cool, but then I was like, oh, those totally break the rules that I myself established in the script. Yeah. But then I was like, I don't care. And you did it anyway. <laughs> and I did it anyway. Wow. The rule of cool strikes again. Yep. Yeah, so anyway, Hank wants this guy, Scott, to become Ant-Man and save the world because he can't do it himself anymore. Scott? Yeah, he's this guy that's just getting out of jail. Why does Hank want him? Well, Scott's an amazing thief, like the stuff of legends when it comes to stealing. Why was he in jail? Oh, because he got caught stealing. Does it, <laughs> does it sound like he's that good at it? Yeah, I guess not. In fact, he's going to fail pretty much any time he tries to steal oh, something in the movie. That's Strange choice of a guy to save the world. I guess so. So what does Scott say? when Hank asks him. Oh, well, he doesn't ask him directly. Oh, he doesn't. No, instead he sets up a super elaborate series of events that could go wrong in a thousand different ways just so that maybe Scott could steal the suit. Why didn't he just ask him? He wanted to see if he'd be able to break into a safe. Could have just asked him. Yeah, but this way is more fun. <laughs> this Hank guy is playing around a lot for someone who wants to save the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, huh. yeah anyway, is. Scott was in jail for about five years, so now he wants to make money so he could pay child support and see his daughter. How old is his daughter? She's like six or seven. So he went to jail for stealing when he had a one or two year old baby at home. That's right. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, Hank Pym is putting a lot of faith in this super sketchy dude. <laughs> yeah, well, he says everyone That's deserves fair. a second chance. Yeah, but should your second chance out of jail have save the world level stakes? Probably not. So who else is in the movie? Well, there's Hank's daughter, Hope, that he keeps secrets from for no valid reason. <laughs> huh. And she's gonna fall in love with Scott because they're both attractive. And is there a villain in the movie? Oh yeah, we've got this villain, Darren Cross, and he is evil. So what's his deal? I, I just told you. Oh, yeah, just, just like evil. a generic okay. evil guy, you know? That's what I'm talking about. So he wants okay. to sell this yellow jacket suit to some evil military types. Right, like an Iron Man. But one of them's not super interested. So Cross is gonna use his incomplete shrink tech to turn him Ugh. into a tiny pile of goo and flush him down a toilet. That's Jesus, rude. why doesn't he try selling that as a weapon? That's horrifying. He doesn't think of that, I guess. <laughs> now, I hate to do this, but is there a way we could kind of tie this movie in with the Avengers? Oh, yeah, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, man. I'll just add like a little side side quest where Ant-Man has to go get a thing and he'll end up fighting an Avenger. I love it. What Avenger did you have in mind? Well, Iron Man would be cool. <laughs> yeah, if you want to double the movie's budget. Oh, does Robert Downey Jr. cost a lot? You're damn right he does. <laughs> that guy's contracts basically drain money from our bank accounts. Oh, wow. Did you know that according to his last contract, we have to pay him every time he uses our bathrooms? I Jesus. didn't know that. Every time he poops in this building, it costs us a thousand bucks. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's not that bad of a deal. Yeah, it's kind of a steal when you think about it. So anyway, how does the movie end? Well, Darren Cross is going to end up figuring out the shrink tech and finishing his suit. Uh-oh. So the team is going to try to steal the technology from him. And it's going to end in this big fight between him and Scott in their little super suits. How's that going to go? Well, despite having no training and never having been in the suit before, Cross is going to be like an expert fighter. Wow. And then Scott's going to go subatomic to kill him. Subatomic? Yeah, like smaller than an atom. But you said the technology works by bringing atoms closer together. Yeah, whatever. Okay. And then Scott's <laughs> going to be pardoned for all the illegal stuff he did, and he's going to dedicate himself to his family. Yeah, I guess he's not going to want to do anything that would jeopardize being able to see his daughter. That's the last thing he'd do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, this movie was, was annoying. <laughs> to the point where I didn't even watch the second one.
Actually, yeah, I, no, mean, I watched the second one. I didn't even watch the third one. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Ant-Man was never my favorite character. I mean, granted, his ability has a ton of usage. Don't get me wrong. It's very practical being able to change your size like that. I mean, I don't know how practical that is, but okay. Well, I mean, like, if you it, need... It's if you, a very efficient, I'll say that. If you need to reach something that's high, or if you need to get into a tight space or something, being able to change your size is going to be incredibly useful. That's what she said! <laughs> but the thing is, one, like they said, kind of rule of cool overrules the science here, because if you're supposed to be able to maintain your whole mass, no matter what size you are, a lot of what happens in this should not be possible. No. So... You're, you're right. I think there was a lot of inconsistency around that, mm -hmm. like, but things needed to happen for the plot, yeah. obviously. And even just the science to go subatomic really shouldn't work because you are made out of atoms, your suit is made out of atoms, so how are you supposed to shrink smaller than the very material that you were made out of? When you're on camera, anything's possible. I, I guess. One thing I want to know is, like, I wonder if all that was true about Robert Downey Jr. I'm pretty sure at one point he was the most paid, the highest I paid think. actor in Hollywood. So no doubt he's costing them some money. Especially now, because he is an Academy Award winning actor. Yeah, his, his paycheck's in demand there. Yeah. Which is probably why most people are like, yeah, we're not interested. But then I'm wondering why you couldn't find, you know, someone smaller for the role, someone who wouldn't take as much money. I don't know, but I mean, now that you've seen it, could you imagine anybody else being Iron Man? No, not really. I mean... Nobody actually comes to mind, <laughs> so... Kind of like Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Some people just really fit their character really well. Very, very true. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it almost seems like a lot of things were just drawn up more, less about, less for story sake and more for convenience sake, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because again, it was all about, it was all about selling movie tickets as many as they can, but also selling merchandise here. So. Right. The one thing I thought was kind of odd too is they didn't really do much to tie this into the Avengers. Because like you said, they had, they were going to have one Avenger show up in the film. But beside that, how did that really further the plot from what we've seen up to this point? Like, is there anything with Thanos in there, or Nick Fury, or... No. They just kind of introduced the character, and that was it. No, I think I think the big thing that they were introducing there is that quantum physics is a thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, thanks. <laughs> so. and, and, it, and it does play out in the, in the later films. Especially in the final Avengers movies there. Yeah, yeah. It's essential in that respect, but at the time, you wouldn't know it. Yes. Yeah. That's literally all the two cents I have on that. I was going to say, there's not a whole lot to really comment on this film, because I think, like you said, it wasn't the best films, not the best cast of characters. No, and Paul Rudd's a good person, too, and I think and I think films he's in that he's in deserve better. Mm -hmm. Or at least he deserves better, because he does work hard, and he's a good family person. So. Yeah. But I do hope he does well in the future there, honestly. I'm sure he's not upset that he was a part of that. Right. Because I'm sure he got paid just fine, so he doesn't need anybody to feel sorry for him but still right right i do want things that he does to be successful though as, as well as michael douglas so yeah yeah so they're both great actors and i'm not a superhero person anyway so right. trying to get me to like a guy like ant-man's not gonna not gonna end easily so <laughs> exactly as always be sure to like subscribe hit the bells check us out on those things up there leave us a comment of some sorts and like and subscribe again guys but until next time this is cocktail flicks i'm joe i'm dan and we'll catch you on the flip side cheers to you fam cheers to you dan cheers to you joe later guys